All right, I've got with me the manager of Champions, Bus Boone from Golden Glory, Jim Bass. As always, good to see you, brother. Good you are going to be a busy man on Saturday night. Let's talk about the guys you've got lining up. First of all, the one that's attracting the most attention, Alistair Overeem, the demolition man, taking on Mr. K1, Peter Ertz. Once again, MMA versus K1. How is Alistair looking? Well, he's always looking good. <laughs> he's always looking big, that's for sure. He's a monster. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people have been, uh, have been, have been saying that. Um, the, th the, the, the fact of the matter is, Alistair always have been a heavyweight. He used to be 100, 200, 3 kilo when he was fighting in Pride, and he has to come out on 10 kilos to make his 93 or 205. Um, after, he had a lot of problems, like in the later round, in the later minutes of the round, six, seven, seven, eight minutes into the round, he, he would get, like, fatigue. And uh, we decided to come up, you know, go to a heavyweight. And he did, he's just performing very well. He's doing, he's doing very well in the heavyweight division. Um, he, he, he's training now with the guys in, uh, in Breda. He's training with, you know, all the stand-up guys there now. And he is really, really improving a lot. Um, of course, his, his still the, the MMA style is still some orthodox for a lot of kickboxers uh, to fight because... With Alistair, you don't know. It yeah. can come from every side. Um, he's very well. Uh, his physique is great. He's, he, you know, his conditioning for a heavyweight is really good. So I expect firework, uh, fireworks from him. I mean, he defeated Badahari very convincingly, and I think he even defeated Remy Boyanski. We told him to take risk in round three because you know we we, we didn't agree that it was a 10-10-10 round, the first and the second. If Alistair is to beat Peter, how does he do it? How do you beat Peter Ertz when you're Alistair over him? Pressure, pressure him from the opening. Of course, Peter. I mean, you, you've seen what Badahari did to him. If uh, if if you're gonna fight a, a kickboxing fight with Peter Arts, you're gonna lose. You gotta you gotta bring it to him. You gotta make war. Okay, that's number one. Let's take a look at the next man on the Golden Glory roster, Semi Schult. Semi was eliminated last year at this time by Peter Ertz in a classic battle. He steps up against the new sensation, Daniel Gita. Gita blew out the competition on August 11, but you've got to put it into perspective, I suppose, Bus. It wasn't great competition that Daniel Gita built, uh, beat, and now he's taking on one of the simply the great legends, the three times champion, Semi Schult. How's Semi looking, and what are your thoughts on, on him facing Gita? Well, Semi, uh, Semi's in great shape. I mean, obviously, his last year wasn't the best uh, uh, when he was qualifying for the Grand Prix. He just moved to a new house. He was into like a, a building, a building the place. Um, he was just became became a father, so it was a, a new fellow in the, in the family. Uh, right now, he's got his priorities very straight. He's been training very hard. Um, I think you will see a complete different Sammy. You'll see a very, very motivated, aggressive Sammy Shield this time. A lot of fans are really rating Daniel Gita. Uh, as I said earlier, I think maybe that the fans have probably overrated Gita a little because the opposition on August 11th wasn't probably world yeah. A-class opposition. He's got great leg kicks. He's a, you know, he's, a, he's a decent puncher. What are your thoughts on Gita and what he brings to this contest? I think, look, these fights are the most dangerous, Michael. If you if you fight, you, you've seen it with Badahari taking MMA fighter, you know, Alistair over him. There was a 90, 10 or 95, 5% chance of Alistair winning that fight, and he knocked him out. And um, same when he fought Remy Boyanski. And as a matter of fact, that's why we took the fight now with Peter Arts. He's a legend. Alistair has nothing to lose. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt his MA career at all. Uh, and actually, it gains popularity for him. He's being on TV more and more and more, and he's doing really well in K1. Gita, in that matter, you know, is a low kicker. Um, Sammy comes from you know karate so he's, he's not going to have too much of a troubles with with with, with that it's not going to be hard best because you look like a little version of Gita. the boys aren't going to think they're beating up on their own manager are no, they no they're not no they're not no i like look Gita, of course he, a lot of people would like you know would love to to look like me and, and, <laughs> and have my career but uh, there is there is Gita is, is uh, we, we never underestimate anybody uh, especially these fighters because they have anything to gain to fight against a, a fighter with that reputation who's a three-time K1 champion. Sure. So it's actually, you have to, you know, it, um, you have to look out because these people, they have nothing to lose. They come in with everything to win, uh, which sometimes is more difficult. Speaking of a man who always comes in with everything and he puts it always on the line is Errol Zimmerman. Is history going to repeat itself again on Saturday night? He bashed Glau Bay Feitoza at this stage last year. This is the revenge match for Glau Bay, but uh, I'll tell you what, we spoke to Errol earlier on and he is looking sharp. Yeah, I, Errol, he trained more than, uh, than he normally does for a fight, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> that promises a lot. Um, he's a natural talent. The guy is a natural heavyweight. The guy is a, a he, he he comes to brawl. So Errol is not a fighter who's gonna fight for you know like even when he knocked down Badahari in round two, we said Errol, you know, the last ten seconds, just take it easy. In round three, then. But Harry has to come, you yeah. know, you don't have to follow him anymore because you're ahead on points, don't go, but then he still goes after him. Yeah. It would be a little bit st similar if, if it was Errol at the finals who was lying there and Badahari jumping on him and we would have all yelled in, in, you know, the whole corner would have said, stay down, it's 400 grand, he would have got up. <laughs> so it's like, it's like the guy comes to brawl, he comes to fight and, and you know, I think fighters respect that and, 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 and the audience and the people in general like, like that type of a fighter. Okay, the busiest manager of the night here is the Bobby the Brain Heenan of the K1 Bass Boon Bass. Good luck on Saturday night. Golden Glory represent again Bass Boon. Thank you, the voice. Bass Boon. Thank you. 